Hey, basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training, and today I'm going to talk to you about some advanced motion offenses that you can run with your basketball team. Let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these amazing basketball plays out. Okay, so in this first play, we're going to start in a five out. And what we're going to have is player one. He's going to set a dribble handoff with player five. And player five is going to use that screen and player one is going to roll towards the basket. At the same time as this happening, we want to have player four setting a screen down for player two. And player two is going to be popping up towards that free throw line extended. Now at this point in time, player 5 has two different options, technically three. He could take that shot, he could pass to player 1 for a layup, or he could pass to player three, or sorry, 2 for a 3 point shot. Next, what I want to see in our number 1 option, if this is not open, is for player 5 to pass to player 2, and we want to get that ball to player 2, 100%. The reason why we want to do that is because player 4 is going to roll off of that screen and he's going to be now screening for player 1. Now, if player 1 is open, he's going to be hit up for a 3 point shot. If player 1 is not open, we're going to be now having player 4 pop up and set a back screen on player 5. Player 5 is going to use that screen and he's going to be cutting towards the basket. He's either going to cut on the inside or he could be cutting on the outside. The issue with cutting on the outside is player 3's help defender may come down and stop this attack from happening. So having player 5 take the inside route is generally the best. If he's open, hit him up for that layup. If that's not open, what we're going to be now having is player 3 pop up. Player 5 fill out, and we are now once again back into the 5 out offense. Now this next motion play, we have a 3 out, 2 in offense. Now in this play, what we're going to be having is player 1. He's going to be passing over to player 3, and he's going to be now cutting across the key and out towards this corner. Now what I want to see happen is player 5 setting that screen so that when player 3 pops out, he could be open for that 3 point shot. Now if player 1 is not open, what I want to see happen is player 2 is going to be popping up towards the point and player 3 is going to pass player 2 the ball. We're now going to be having player 5 and 4 set a double screen for player 1 and player 1 is going to be popping out towards the, that far side. Now after using that double screen he could be open for a 3 point shot and if he is we really want to see him take that shot. However if there's any switches down low what I want to see happen, so let's say player 1 red gets hung up on player 4 and player 4's man pops out to defend that 3 point shot. Whether or not player 1 gets that ball, I want to see a pass inside because this right here is a massive, massive size advantage for your team. So if you can get a size advantage off of a screen, make sure to use it. Whether or not player 1 gets that ball, if he's not able to take that shot because player 4 is switched off, we will be able to have a size advantage at our disposal. Now, if we're running a play, this play against a man-to-man -man defense, when that ball gets down into the low post, I want to see a back screen up for player 3 for player 3 to cut because now we may just have an opening down low for player 3. However, whether or not player 1's open, whether or not there was a switch, let's say there was no switch, and we don't have the ball down low, and at this point of time, we're now back in our 3 out, 2 in offense, and we can set up another motion play. Now this next play I'm going to show you is a really great play that I like to run with most of my teams that I've coached. This next play I like to call the triangle motion. And what we're going to be having here is player 5, he's going to be starting in the low or high post. It does not matter. There are a few different options if he was to start in the high post and I will explain those to you in a few seconds. However, what we're looking to do here is have player 1 pass to player 4 and player 1 is going to cut down towards this corner. Now, I would like to say that this offense does also work for a zone defense as well, but I'm going to show you it here with a man-to-man, -man, but it does work with a zone. Next, 
what we're going to be having is player four looking to pass the ball into the low post or out towards this corner or looking to reverse the ball. Now reversing the ball is extremely important especially against a zone defense because we're going to be setting double screens down low for the low post defenders so that when we swing that ball we can have an opening right on that far side for a three point shot and I would like to say that this play has gotten many players many three point shots I actually got one player eight three point shots in a quarter from the same play running it over and over and over again which is fantastic now if we get that ball into the low post, the idea behind this motion is it's a free-flowing offense. It's read and react. So we can now have player one set a screen up for player four, and player four can use that screen. Or it could be a flip side screen. And now we're going to have player four cutting across the top of the key along the free throw line. He could have an open shot. If that happens, there could be help defenders coming down. We can pass out to player two. There are so many options. But let me show you what the reverse is. But first, really quickly, I'll show you what I mean earlier by having the player in the high post instead. So when that player is in the high post, he can set that screen for player one. And player one can cut down towards this low block at first because now... If he's open, he can go in for a layup. If he's not, he's going to pop out. And if, let's say, player 5 red popped off for a few seconds to cut off that drive, we still have a player 1 who's open for a possible 3-point shot. So that's why I like to have player 5 start in the high post every once in a while. Now, there's quite a few different sets that you can run off of this motion, but I'm going to show you the reverse or swing towards the other side. Now, player four has that ball. We're going to be reversing this pass against a man-to-man -man defense. We're going to be having a screen away against a zone defense. We're going to be having player two running towards the ball, and he's going to receive that pass. Now, we're going to be having player three move down into the low post to set up a screen, and player five is going to be setting up a screen on this side. We're now going to be having player one pop out and through and player two is going to take one dribble out towards this side and pass player one that ball. Once player one has made it past the first player, we're now going to be having player four cut through. Now, of course, player one could have been open, but now we're going to be having player four cut through. So that once player one gets that ball, by the time he receives that ball, player four should be just popping once player one receives that pass so that he can make a quick decision to pass over to player four for the three-point shot now this player if he can get off a fairly quick shot he should be able to get multiple threes whether you're running up against a man-to-man -man or a zone defense now with this play i'm going to show you it really quickly against a zone defense because i just showed you it against a man so against a zone defense, generally speaking, you're going to be seeing the zone ran like this. It's a, let's say this is a 2-3 zone. We're going to be having the ball passed over, cut down. That's going to be bringing these two players over. You could get a quick shot off with player one, possibly, before player four cuts that off. Now, to do the reverse, we're going to be having player two run towards the ball. Player four is going to pass player two that ball. We're going to be having player 3 set a screen on this side of player 3. And player 5 is going to be setting a screen on one of those two players out on the wing. Player 2 blue is going to be dribbling over towards this side. And we're going to be having player 1 pop out. Now, that's going to be bringing player 3 out, especially against the 2-3 zone. That's going to be bringing player 5 over. If it doesn't bring player 5 over, we could do a quick pass down to player 3 for a nice mid-range or low post shot. But now we're going to be having player 4 cut through as well. And now with this swing that you'll, you're seeing, you're going to be most likely having player 4 open against a zone defense. So, if this is the case, player 4 is going to be getting a ton of points. 
And so far, that's three plays that you can run with any high school team that you're coaching. And that first play, the five out, is really great, especially with younger teams who are in that mid middle range, like grade seven, grade eight range of players. Now, these last two plays are going to be five out plays, and they are extremely difficult to run. Unless you're coaching a grade 11, 12 team, it might be a bit easier. So in this first play, we're going to be having both player 5 and 2 setting the screens down for the farther down uh, the far wing players. Those players are going to be popping up, and player 1 is going to be passing to one of those two players. Whichever one he passes to, now what's going to happen, of course he could have gotten off that shot if he was open, but player 1 passed to player 3, we're now going to be having player 5 set up. A screen in that low post and player 2 is going to be using that screen player 2 may be open for a three-point shot if that's the case 100% use that shot or take that shot if he's not open player 5 is now going to be setting a screen or a back screen for player 3 player 3 is going to use that screen and he's going to be cutting towards the basket if he's open, definitely hit him up for a shot. If he's not open and they haven't trapped player two yet, because let's say they try to trap that off of that screen, player three is definitely going to be open at that point and he's going to get that layup. However, if they haven't trapped him and player three is not open, he's going to be continuing out towards the opposite side. And what we're going to be having now is player five popping out and he's going to be now setting a screen for player one and player one is going to be showing here towards the free throw line extended and player five what's going to happen now is he's going to be popping up towards the top or if there was a fight through we can now have player five just turn and set a screen and now we are back in the five out now this next 5-0 play I like to call a dribble handoff screen away. Now this is still a very advanced play, but I have ran it with a team that was a grade 9 team who were very all very court smart, so keep that in mind. So we're going to be doing a dribble handoff with player 4. Player 4 is going to use that dribble handoff, and now player 1 is going to be setting a screen down and away for player 3. Player 3 is going to be using that screen he's going to be popping up. While this is happening, what I want to see happen is Player 4, this is going to be working extremely quickly up top. Dribble handoff, and by the time this dribble handoff happens, I want Player 3 to be just getting to that free throw line extended area. Now the reason because of this is because now, of course, he could be open for a shot. And if he is open for a shot, he better be taking that shot. But the other reason is now player four is going to be setting a screen down. And now we're going to be having player three. This is going to be a dribble handoff on this side. Player three is going to get that dribble handoff. Player two is popping. And now he may have a shot open for a three-point shot. And essentially, we're going to be doing dribble handoffs in these spots of the court. We're going to be setting screen downs on this side of the court. And up top is dribbling. So it's still a simple-ish play, but still very advanced for most basketball players at the elementary school age. I hope that you have enjoyed these basketball plays. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. I hope that they help you win more basketball games. And I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.